In our previous video, we learned how to write this Hello World program in assembly language. And in this video, I am going to explain what this code means. So when I look at this code, it looks very scary. And the reason is we are writing a simple Hello World program and for that we have written about 10 to 12 lines of code for a, just a simple Hello World program. If we compare this to a high level programming language like Python, we will see that we can do the same thing in just one line. So let's see why this code is longer and what are the things going on here. So first we have to understand why do we use assembly language. Assembly is a low level language that is used to directly communicate with the processor and the memory. Now the advantage of using such a low level programming language is that we can have more direct control over the hardware itself compared to a high level programming language like C++ or Python where the code itself is shorter but we miss a lot of the things that are going behind the scenes. So long story short, the lower the programming language, the more we have to code and the more direct control we have. The higher the programming language, the less code we have to write, but we also lose control at the same time. So let's come to this program. What is happening here? First thing that we need to understand is that this program is divided into two sections. One is this section data and another is this section text. These are the two main sections of this program and any program in assembly language. So what is this section data? Now as we can see this contains the hello world message itself. So in our program's data section we provide data and in our text section and the second section we have is the text section. In the text section we write the instructions for the processor. Now we just talked about the two major sections which are the section data and the section text in our program and we understand that in the data section we provide our program with the data that we will need and in the text section we write the code or the instruction set for our processor. So now let's talk about our text section. Now our text section consists of this global start and underscore start. So what are these two lines? So these two lines represent the entry point of the program which means the execution of the program will start from this line. So now we understand that in our major section text we have the starting point of our program and after the starting point we move on to our first instruction that we give to our processor. So what is this instruction? M-O-V-R-A-X comma 1. So first let's understand what is M-O-V. M-O-V stands for move which means we are moving something. And what is this R-A-X? This R-A-X is a register. Now what is a register you might ask? So you can think of registers as the section of the processor which stores instructions and RAX is one such register. And what is this one? This one has a special meaning. Here this one means that we are telling our operating system. This one means that we are telling our operating system we want to write something. So this whole code means we are moving the number one into the register RAX. To simplify this I can show you how the same code might look in a higher high level programming language such as Python. So you can think of the register RAX as a variable and we are moving the number 1 into the register RAX so we can write RAX equals 1. It is the same code as writing move 1 into RAX and again here this one means that we are telling our operating system that we want to write something. Moving on to our second instruction which is move rdi comma 1. 
now we already saw what move means and RDI as you can guess is just another register but this one has another special meaning when it is being moved into the RDI register in the second line this one means we want to write something to the console so in the first line the one meant we are telling our operating system that we want to write something and in the second line we are telling the operating system that we want to write on the console in our third line we are using another instruction set which is move message into RSI RSI is just another register as you can see this message is in our data section and we have said that message DB hello world and comma 10 so what does this mean you can think of message as just another variable in some other programming language and this DB is actually the variable type the DB stands for bytes of data and finally we are writing the message itself which is hello world but what is this comma 10 this 10 actually has a special meaning as well this 10 actually represents a new line character which means every time this message is called we will not be printing to the same line again instead we will go to the next line so when this message is moved into the RSI register now one thing we need to understand here is that we are moving message into RSI register now this RSI register is a part of the processor as I just said any register is a part of the processor but this message this message is written in our data section and it is not stored in the processor instead it is stored in our memory or what we call the RAM so we are taking the message which is stored in our memory and we are moving it to the RSI register of our processor moving on to our fourth instruction set and the last move 12 into RDX now what is this 12 where does this come from this 12 is actually the length of the hello world you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 the space is a character and it is the sixth character then 7 8 8 9 10 11 we have 11 characters here but after that we also have this 10 which is a representation for our new line character which makes it 11 plus 1 which is 12 what we are actually moving is the length of this hello world and the new line character into our register RDX to put it simply every time we print something in our assembly language we also have to pass its length to the RDX register so finally we have the last line of our program which is syscall what this means is we have written all our instruction set and now we want to call our operating system to perform all those instructions on the processor so as we saw in our last video if we write NASM minus FL64 then first dot ASM which is the file name this will give us a first dot O file which is already present and then if we link that by LD first dot O we finally get our executable file which is named as a dot out and if we execute that by pressing dot forward slash then a dot out we get our hello world and our segmentation fault which I promise to talk about in the next video so the important thing to see here is whether or not you have understood the code behind hello world because in my opinion writing hello world in any programming language is the toughest part of learning that programming language if you have understood how to write hello world in assembly this segmentation fault it's it's just gonna go away in two seconds this is a simple fault in our code that we are just going to fix right now 
So first let's understand why is this segmentation fault happening. So let's open our file which is first.asm. So I'm gonna write nano then first.asm which is going to open our file in nano text editor. Here what's happening is that first we are telling our RAX register that we want to write something and then we are telling the RDI register that we want to write something on the console and next we are defining what we want to write which is our message into the RSI register and then finally we are passing the length of our message in our RDX register. So what is going wrong here? Well the thing is after running all of this instruction set our operating system doesn't know what to do next. Our operating system thinks that we want to give it more instructions but we know that our program has already ended. So there is a miscommunication between us and our operating system. We need to tell our system somehow that we have ended our program. We don't want to give any more instruction statements. So for that we just need to write two simple lines of code after syscall. So after syscall we will write move rax comma 60. Now we already saw move rax which is we are moving something into the rax register but what is this 60? Now as you might already see that in assembly code we have a big problem with numbers. Each number has a special meaning, each number represents something. So in the same way 60 has a special meaning. 60 means we are going to exit our program. So as we saw 1 means we want to write something, 60 means we want to exit our program. So now that we are telling our RAX register that we want to exit our program, we want to verify that yes everything has run successfully and we will exit our program in success. So to do that we will write move RDI comma 0. So when we are moving 0 into RDI it is freeing up the console because in our previous message to RDI we moved 1 inside the RDI register and it meant that we want to write something to the console. But finally when we are moving when we are moving 0 into RDI our console is now freed up and our operating system understands that we don't want to carry out any more instruction sets. So finally we want to do another system call which will call our operating system and tell it to further carry out all these instructions and when we save this program and we exit it and now if we compile this first.asm file we will get our first.o file and now if we link that first.o file we will get our a.out file which is our executable file and when we execute that a.o file we will see that we have got our hello world but this time there is no segmentation error. One thing to keep in mind here is every time you make changes to your program you have to carry out these three sentences. If you don't recompile the program and relink the program and re-execute the program each time you make changes to the program your changes will not occur and you might face issues with your program. So make sure to write these three lines every time you make changes to your program. So now that you understand how to write the hello world program you can type out any other output in assembly language. I will recommend you to practice with different outputs at least three to five times. Assembly code is hard to write but if you write it about three to five times you will pretty much get used to it. And if you have any problems while watching this video you can re-watch the video I'm sure it will you will have a better understanding when you rewatch the video and still if you are having problem with something or you have got stuck in your way you can just comment and I will for sure reply to help you out. So that is it for this video and thanks for watching. Goodbye.